Hello everyone, Anjali this side and today I'll be telling you about data manipulation language in SQL. So we've already discussed how to create a table, how to work on the table structure, but our table is still empty. Now we want data in the table. So to put the data, to fetch the data based on different conditions, to delete existing data or to modify the data stored in the table, we need data manipulation language. So basically there are four commands in this that would be insert into, delete, update and select. The first command we have in data manipulation is insert into. My table is blank, I want to insert more data to it or even if it has some records, you want to insert more data to it, we use insert into command for that. So insert into is the keyword which you have to write as it is with a space. Then you have to mention the table name in which you have to insert the data. Then we write values and in bracket you have to give all the values followed by each other in the same order as you have defined in the table structure. While giving the values, the values which are numbers should be given without the quotes. But if your data type is care, var, care or date, the value should be given in quotes, single or double quotes, both will work. I'll show you how. So. This is my MySQL screen. Let's use a database. So I write use school, which is an existing database in my system. Then I want to show the tables in it. There is only one table named student, but show tables will show me that we have student table. If I write describe student, I get the structure of the student table. Now to insert a record into this, I need to write insert into, that's the keyword which you have to write. Then student, that's name of the table. Then I'll write the word values. I'll give round bracket. Now I have to give values for all the fields one by one. So admission number is let's say 1280. Name, I give anything, say Ankit. I've given it in single quotes. Class is varcare. So again, I have to give that in single quotes or you can give double quotes as well. Section is character, so it has to be given in quotes again. Then I have the roll number and then I have marks. Close the round bracket, press semicolon, enter. So when it shows query OK, that means your row is inserted in the table. So likewise, I can insert as many rows as I want. I need to write the insert into command again and again for this. So for every row, you need to write that command again. So this is how we insert a row in a table. Then if you need to delete something from the table, the second command is delete from. So we write delete from, that's the keywords. Then you have to write table name. We can stop the query over here as well. This will delete all the data of the table. If I write delete from student, then all records of student table will get deleted. But we have an optional thing with this, that is where condition. So where condition is optional, if you want to give a condition, you will write it with the query. If you don't want a condition, you can just skip it. I want to give a condition that only those students should be deleted who have scored less than 30. So I can write like delete from student where marks less than 30. And for less than, obviously, we need to use a symbol for the less than sign. We can't write that in English. Then we have update command. Update is used to modify the data in the table. You have something, some data is there in the table and you want to make changes. Remember, when we have to change the structure of the table, we use alter table command. But when we have to modify the data inside the table, we use update command. So how do we write it? We write update, name of the table. Set is a keyword. Then you have to write name of the attribute, the field which we need to modify is equal to the value which you want to put in that, the new value. And this again, where condition is optional. If you want to restrict the rows, you'll write this where, otherwise it will modify all the rows. For example, I've written update student set marks is equal to marks plus five. This will increase marks of all the students by five. But if I write here update student set marks is equal to marks plus five, where class is equal to 12. So it will update only those records who are in class 12. And finally, the command which we use the most is the select command. We also call it as data retrieval command. 
it is used to fetch the data from the table. Table is there, the data is there, you want to see based on different conditions or based on different criteria. How do we write it? We write select the star sign we give if we want to see all the columns. If you don't want to see all the columns, you have to write the name of the attributes separated by commas from name of the table from where you have to fetch and again where condition is optional. I'll show you how these commands work. For example, we had this table student. Now I want to see the complete data of the table. So I'll be writing select star from student and I put a semicolon and press enter. So we already had some data and one record we just inserted. So you can see the already existing data along with the record we just inserted are being displayed over here. It's displaying the complete table data. I don't want the complete data. I want only for class 12. So I'll add where, where class is equal to 12. So when I write where class is equal to 12, it will show me the data only for those students who are in class 12. Similarly here, right now it's showing the complete information. That means all the attributes. But I don't want to see all the attributes. I want to see only name and marks of class 12 students. So instead of giving star, I'll write select name comma marks from student where class is equal to 12. So it will show only name and marks and rest of the columns will not be shown. So that is how we can restrict the columns to be displayed. Similarly, if I want to use update command, I write update student set marks is equal to marks plus two semicolon. So it shows that query okay, 10 rows affected. That means for all 10 rows, it has changed the marks. You want to see the data. So if I check the data again, like for Ankit only, you can see the marks were 89 when we inserted. Now it's 91. And for all other students also, marks have been increased by two. So that's how update command works. And if you want to delete something, you need to write delete from student where, um, let's say there is a student Rahul who has marks less than 47 or otherwise his admission number is 125. So I can directly write where admission number is equal to 125, semicolon, enter. It shows one row affected. That means one row is deleted. When I write select star from student again, you can see that Rahul's record is no longer over here. So that's how we can delete the record which we want to delete with the help of a condition. If the condition satisfies with more than one rows, then more than one rows will get deleted. So these are the basic four DML commands that how to insert a record, how to see what is there in the table, how to delete a record which is already existing and how to modify the values in the table. So I hope the basics of DML commands is clear to you and we'll be discussing the conditions in detail because only greater than less than signs are not sufficient for checking all conditions. So we'll be checking all different type of conditions we can give with where in the next lecture. Thank you.